Hi kids, it's Mrs. Frabel. How are you? Good, I hope you're fine. Uh, I'm fine, thanks for asking. Hey, today we're gonna talk about the other class of the fishes, the last class, uh, class chondrichthys. Say it with me, it's a hard word, chondrichthys. Good, okay, these are fishes that have skeletons made of cartilage rather than bone, and we're gonna talk about uh, two groups of cartilaginous fishes, the elasmobranchs and the chimera. So let's get going. Okay, um, so last time we were together, last week, we talked about um, the osteichthys fish. Those are fish with uh, bony skeletons. Um, and these, these fishes are kind of like the opposite in so many ways. So uh, here are the basic characteristics for cartilaginous fishes. Uh, these have, of course, skeletons made of cartilage hence the name. Uh, their tail is what's called heterocircle. So they have, um, all fish have tails with two lobes, um, and the appearance of those lobes depends on the fish's adaptations, what they do, how they swim, what their life is like. Um, with cartilaginous fishes, uh, they generally will have one lobe larger than the other lobe, and it's it's generally the dorsal lobe, and then their backbone goes all the way through um, almost to the tip of that top lobe and kind of curves upward. Again, the animals that we're talking about are sharks, rays, skates, and chimera. So this tail might look different uh, in different groups, um, but in general, the, the for most sharks anyway, um, that we've got that heterocircle uh, lobe difference, okay? Oh, I haven't talked much today, so forgive me if I do my usual blah, 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 and my brain stops. Okay, did you write those two down? Good, let's keep going. Uh, their mouth position on these animals is always ventral. So on osteichthyan fish, their, their mouth is always like on the end of their face. It's called a terminal mouth. For chondrichthyans, their mouth is um, situated like on the ventral side of their body. So it's like their nose, their snout hangs over the top. And, and um, so that's ventral mouth position. They have placoid scales. Someone's ringing my doorbell at my house. Uh, they have placoid scales. So osteichthys had tenoid or cycloid scales, which were thin and flexible, circular or kind of squarish shaped. So um, these guys have scales that are actually called dental oh, <laughs> dermicles. Dent, derma, they have skin teeth. And their teeth are actually just... Um, modified scales really that uh, evolved as their jaws evolved um, to become feeding tools. Okay, so this is a micrograph of placoid scales on a shark. So they've got these really kind of sharp, um, more rigid scales that overlap on their body. Okay, okay. Um, they're also not as flexible as the tenoid scales on osteotheans. Woo, I'm fine. Uh, these guys have fleshy, meaty, muscly fins. So, and they don't have much joint articulation. So their fins are not the wavy, um, shouldery joints like we saw in osteotheans. These are solid. Um, in the rays, they do have some muscular wave action to propel themselves, um, but for the most part, their fins are really just for stabilization. Um, other than their tail fin, their caudal fin, um, which is their propulsion mechanism in sharks, um, their pectoral fins are mostly for stabilization and um, along with their pelvic fins, which have some movement, but not a ton. Okay, uh, They have five to seven gill slits that are open directly into the water. They don't have the opercula that cover them. And uh, they have structures called spiracles, which are like holes in their heads. Um, those openings are used to bring water in for respiration uh, without having to open their mouths. And some males, in some species, males have a structure called a clasper, which is a projection off of their um, anal fins or their pelvic fins that are used in copulation. Um, and uh, their buoyancy is uh, functioned or it's aided by the presence of uh, oils produced in their livers and it infuses in their tissues as well. Um, 
oil is a um, hydrophobic substance and so it's also less dense than water so they tend to so it helps them float osteichthyan fish have that swim bladder that's full of gas that that changes size and shape as the fish move up and down in the water column um, that helps them maintain buoyancy sharks and rays don't have that they just have oil in their tissues that helps them float if they need to okay why is it hard for me to talk sometimes? I don't know. Here we go. Okay, what am I talking about? Oh, look at all of these cuties. Okay. This is an old group. They've been around. The modern examples of this group have been around for about 250 million years. The original chondrichthyan um, shark-like fish around, were uh, appear in the fossil record around 400 425 million years ago. Um, but our modern kids have have tons. The, the diversity, again, is just wonderful. Um, these guys come as uh, sharks, rays, chimeras. So everybody knows the white shark. We're going to call it by its politically correct name, the white shark, not the great white shark. It's less scary if you just call it a white shark, apparently. Um, chimeras, what the heck? Chimeras, um, that one type is called a ratfish, and I'll go through some of those in a minute. Um, I, I think they're adorable. Uh, the uh, oceanic stingray, so this is this is a big bottom-dwelling um, stingray. Uh, I took this picture at our aquarium. She's a she's, she's big girl, big girl. And then fresh, freshwater rays, there are also freshwater uh, chondrichthians, mostly rays, um, and they are beautiful. They're spotted, they can be smaller, um, they're gorgeous. I would love to have one in my aquarium, but I don't. And then, of course, we have the pelagic rays, the big filter-feeding giant manta rays that, um, and mobula rays that can be 17, 20 feet from wingtip to wingtip. They are amazing animals. And of course, whale sharks, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute, uh, which is the largest fish on the planet. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's talk about um, a little more. Mm -mm, let's go a little deeper into their taxonomy. Okay. I'll just sit. I'll sit there. That's fine. Um, so the elasmobranchs. So within the class chondrichthys, we have two subclasses. Um, elasmobranchii are the ones that you guys are most familiar with. These are sharks, rays, and sawfish. And uh, these guys um, have all of the chondrichthyan stuff. And then um, their teeth are in several series, and that means rows. So if you open their mouth, you can see rows of teeth. Like you have one row of teeth, they'll have many. And those teeth are not um, fused to the jaw, so they just fall out and another tooth pops in, um, folds forward in its place. So their teeth are, are kind of disposable. Um, and they're, again, they're modified scales. So uh, they overlap. They're just projections from the skin, okay? Um, and then these guys have sensory nerve pits on their head and snout. I believe the chimera do too, but this was a good place to introduce this, so it's here. Uh, they have sensory nerve pits on their head and snout. So remember, osteichthyan fish, they have that lateral line down the sides of their bodies that are sensory nerve pits. They sense pressure. Um, the the elasmobranchs have that as well, but it's in their, it, their dots on their face and snout. They're not concentrated into a line. Um, those are called ampullae of Lorenzini. You don't need to memorize that, but that's where a lot of their... Um, their their pressure sensory their touch sense is is right in the front of their snout and that helps them um, investigate prey uh, and find prey and um, uh, it's also a good way and I'll talk about how to defend against sharks a little bit so uh, some again another weirdo in here are um, the sawfish these guys have an elongated snout with tooth projections off of them um, that they that they use to uh, get prey as far as I know. Okay, let's talk about some of the some of the cool cool species. Uh, there are over 360 species of just shark. Actually, it's 375. We've found a few more since I last updated this, um, and they come in all shapes, all sizes, all feeding strategies as well. Um, they can range in size from small enough to fit in your hand up to 46 feet long. That is how big a whale shark is. The little guys, this is a pygmy shark. Oh my gosh, they're cute. That's in a person's hand. They're like this big. Um, 
And they, these guys eat small fish and squid, um, and they are deep water sharks. There's also lantern sharks that are similar to those. And then the largest shark, of course, is the whale shark. And remember, a whale is not a fish, and a whale shark is not a whale. A whale shark is a fish. Um, Rhynchodon typus. Uh, these guys are filter feeders, gentle giants. They eat plankton. They they um, are are just again super cool. And then of course we have like basking sharks. Oh sorry, basking sharks. Um, I think this is a mega mouth shark that again filter feeders. They don't have the big nom nom chompy teeth. They just swim along with their mouth open, strain out any um, organic matter, small fish, crustaceans, krill that are in there, um, and then swallow. Okay. Uh, sharks are pretty long-lived. It varies by species, but in av on average, a medium-sized species uh, can live 20 to 30 years. Uh, spiny dogfish, which is the um, specimen I have in class, uh, those can live up to 100 years. They're they're slow-growing, slow-reproducing animals. These are these these aren't live fast, die hard. They they have long, slow whole lives. Okay. Um, and then a uh, whale shark also is thought to, thought to be able to live over 100 years. And the oldest known living vertebrate is the Greenland shark, uh, which we, we, their samples have been taken from some that uh, they're thought to be over 400 years old. So, I mean, there are Greenland sharks that are, have been around longer than the United States of America as a country, right? I, uh, imagine what they've seen. I don't know. Pretty cool. Uh, reproduction. Sharks are freaks. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, sharks lay eggs, which is, oh, remember, remember way back in physiology, we talked about reproductive terms and reproductive strategies. So sharks can be oviparous, which means they lay eggs, or ovoviviparous, which means they give birth to live young. Uh, generally, those young are not attached to the mother. It's like she retains an egg. She retains the egg sacs in her body for them to mature in safety. Um, the egg cases that are laid by sharks, by the vi um, oviparous sharks, um, are sometimes called mermaid's purses, and they come in really neat shapes, um, really crazy. This this is an egg case right there that would have a baby shark developing in it and when the mother shark lays those eggs she'll actually twist her body around on top of the sand and drill it down into the sand so that it's protected and then these little mermaids purses um, have these little hoops or little hooks off the top and there are some species of shark that, that lay them in um, kelp beds and seaweed beds and they'll, they'll kind of hang them, hang their baby eggs on um, on the kelp. It's, it's like they're decorating for Christmas with their babies. They're really neat. I've got one in class. Um, I'll, I'll show it live in class. Sorry, I don't have it in my hand for you to see, but they look like that. Okay, okay and then uh, there are other ancillary videos that go along with this. They're linked under this video on Canvas. I'm fine. Okay, let's talk about scary, scary sharks. Okay, Sharks have a really bad reputation. And it's not that they're not, not that they don't have the potential to be dangerous, but every wild animal has the potential to be dangerous. I mean, really, right? I mean, but sharks are predators. We as helpless, hairless, clawless apes, um, we are afraid of predators and we have, we have good reason in our history to be. However, we've kind of, um, socially evolved out of a lot of danger from predators and yet we still treat them like they're garbage and they're dangerous and we should hunt and kill them all and sharks are no exception. Um, the problem right now with shark populations is they are being decimated um, by uh, humans removing them from the ocean and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Uh, but remember, not all sharks are meat eaters. Not all of them have the big giant teeth. They're not all aggressive speed hunters. Some of them are filter feeders, bottom feeders. Um, and some of them have small mouths. They're, they're built to eat crustaceans um, or mollusks. So um, seeing a shark does not necessarily need to scare you. But whenever you go into the ocean or into the forest or anywhere that there might be wild animals, 
Always give those animals their space and always be aware of your surroundings. Don't harass animals. Don't try to get near them. Don't try to do a selfie. That is the dumbest, most irritating human thing right now that I can think of is taking selfies with wild animals. Knock it off. It's dumb. Dumb. Be aware of your surroundings. If you are in the water, um, if you're scuba diving or snorkeling or wading or swimming in the ocean, just keep an eye out around you for things. I mean, you might see something really cool, but if you see a shark, if you're approached by a shark, A, if you can get out of the water quickly, do that, obviously. But don't, this is what, this is what the pros say, and there's a video right here about a, a shark biologist talking about this. Get out of the water if you can, but try not to turn your back on a shark. Try to keep eye contact with it so you know where it is. If it does come close enough to you to where you need to defend yourself, punch it in the eye, punch it in the gills, push on its nose. If you can overstimulate those ampullae of Lorenzini, it's like the shark is, blah, it's too much for it. And you can get it to turn away long enough for you to get out. Of course, there are always rogue sharks. There are always dangerous sharks. Um, always just be careful, but don't be afraid to go in the water, right? Just know where you are, okay? Um, and also sharks aren't, we, they don't hunt humans. Um, most of the time when a human gets bitten by a shark, it's because the shark was being inquisitive. They are very curious, smart animals. So it just, they might taste you, which is not harmless, right? They have, they have sharp teeth, um, but, but they generally won't eat people, most of them. The ma vast majority of, of a shark will not eat a person because we don't taste good. Look, we're gross. Okay. And, uh, 375, 360 to 375 shark species. There are 12 that are actually aggressive and potentially dangerous to humans. If you're close to shore, uh, there are white sharks, tiger sharks, bull sharks that are they're pretty aggressive. Um, if you're out in the ocean, uh, in the pelagic zone, uh, ocean white tip, make go blue sharks. Those are, those tend to be the more dangerous ones. Again, don't be afraid. Be smart and be cautious anytime you're in the wild. Okay. We're again, we are vulnerable, hairless, weaponless apes. Okay. All right. Besides, and despite that, we are the dangerous ones. Okay. <clears throat> I think there's something on average like 20 humans per year are actually killed by sharks. Out of the billions of humans that go into the ocean every year, 20 die. There are a few hundred bites taken. We kill 100 million sharks every year. We are running out of sharks and that's not a good thing. That's not okay. They are exceedingly important in their environment in their position in the food web, in the food chain. Um, and we're seeing some repercussions and some trophic failure, uh, trophic cascade failure going on because we take so many of them away. Some of them, um, many of them are caught on purpose for their fins uh, and also for their oil. Also shark cartilage is uh, a product that is sold um, I would like to encourage you to encourage your parents not to use shark oil or shark cartilage. There are um, just as effective alternatives that don't kill sharks. Shark finning is a horror. It's awful. It's terrible. There's a video there. I will link it. I will warn you that there's some, if you like animals, it's a little disturbing, but it's the reality of how sharks are finned. And essentially, if you don't want to watch the video, here's how it goes. Um, shark fin soup is a delicacy in China, even though the fins aren't actually eaten. They're just kind of boiled in the broth. They don't, they don't actually do anything for the soup from what I understand, but it used to be like for royalty, eat shark fin soup. Now it's this trendy delicacy. Um, so shark, and it's, it's expensive. So shark fins, um, are very valuable on the fish market. So fishermen will catch hundreds of fish a day, um, or hundreds of sharks a day. They'll pull the shark onto the boat. Uh, if the shark is being aggressive, well, duh, it's been pulled out of the water. It's going to try to defend itself. So they will club it or stab it, but not generally they won't spend any time trying to actually kill it. They'll just stun it, cut its fins off with a knife while the shark is still alive and then throw its body back overboard. 
finless, still alive. And the sharks die slowly and horribly, bleeding to death or drowning because they can't swim to irrigate their gills. We're great. Um, and then also in industrial fishing that uses nets that are a mile long, they're caught as bycatch and just thrown away. Okay. Anyway, all right. So one of the special groups in Elasmobranchii um, is order, or super order, whatever, order Batoidae. These are the rays and the skates, and they're adorable, and I love them. Um, so these are in Elasmobranchs. They're a cousin to sharks. They just, they, they have some significant differences. So these guys have enlarged pectoral fins that, that span the entire length of their body, um, and they are, uh, they're not articulated, but they, they use them for propulsion instead of their tail. So they, they flap, majestic sea flap flap, right? Um, they're not all stingrays, but stingrays do have a, um, venomous tail, uh, and their, their tail, that heterocircle tail is reduced, um, and is, is just there for stabilization and protection. But not all, not all rays are stingrays. Not all of them have venomous spines, but again, if you go to the beach, if you wade into the ocean, you should shuffle your feet in the sand to scare any rays out out from in front of you. I had a student a couple of years ago who uh, was in San Diego when he was 15, and they were, yay, swimming in the ocean, yay, jump in and run in the water. He stepped on a ray, and it, it whipped around and... Um, impaled his leg with its with its stingray. Um, so he had to go to the hospital. He had a big scar. He lived. But um, yeah, they can be dangerous. So just again, be aware of what's in the water. The beaches are not there for you, my friend. They are there for everything else. And we like to visit. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, these guys can be filter feeders or, or uh, what's called a benthic predator. Um, they eat mollusks and stuff hiding in the sand in the seagrass. I got to watch one eat in Belize, and it was like the, the best part of my day. Because I'm a nerd. Uh, this is a sawfish. It's super weird. They're also endangered. There's not many of them. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So that was subclass Elasmobranchii. Those were the sharks and rays and skates. And skates just look like rays. They're just a little different. Here's the other subclass of chondrichthian fish. These are chimera. I think they're adorable. Uh, these guys, uh, common names, ghost sharks, ratfish, spookfish, and rabbitfish. Uh, they have elongated, soft body. They've got a big, knobby, sometimes kind of almost armored head. Uh, they have a, one single gill opening. So elasmobranchs have the rows five to seven gill openings. These guys just have one and it doesn't have an operculum on it. It just is open. Um, it's tucked right back up against their pectoral fin. I'll show you in class. I have one. Um, you should come to class if you can because it's this is when we start playing with stuff, and it's fun. These guys, a lot of deep water species, very ancient, um, and they do sometimes have a venomous spine on their dorsal fin um, as defense. And then they've got that long snout. Their snouts are really big, and they are um, they have a lot of sensory pits in them as well. And there's a there's a video about this ghost shark, Hydrolagus femici, 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 sure, and then Hydrolagus. Hydrologus coli. I've got one of these uh, that I will be showing in class in the fish lab. If you can come, you should come next week. Same with fish like that. Okay. No, oh, that's all. I'm done. Wow. Okay, if you are not watching this in February of 2021, please ignore those due dates and go check Canvas for your actual due dates. Uh, but the assignment that goes along with this is a fish's comparison poster. Um, and then your fish is prezi, and then uh, the test on fishes will be probably next week. Again, if you're not watching this in February 2021, then don't worry about those dates I just said. I'll let you know. Okay, okay. And if you're watching this and you're not in my class, what the heck are you doing? No, just kidding. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. Uh, have a great day. Have a great week. And uh, be good. Be safe. Be kind and um, take care, okay? Bye.